Did you know anyone who uh, passed away? Yeah. Did you know anyone who passed away? Um, my cousin Willard, uh, he was 22 years old. He passed away on August 4th, 2014, which was five days before, um, six days before my wedding day. Um, I was preparing for the last minute errands that we needed to do for our wedding day. And it just so happened on a Sunday night um, I got a phone call from my parents who wanted to ask if I was, if we were with him or if Anthony and my brother were with him and they weren't. So long story short, it turns out that he was rushed to the hospital after um, a, a, a party that he decided to go to all weekend, which we all knew about. And uh, yeah, and he was supposed to come home after, after that. So yeah. I do know somebody who passed away recently. It was actually my mother. Uh, she passed away in early part of March. I think it was March the 12th. Um, and we happened to be right in the heart of COVID. And we were near the um, beginning of a lockdown. My mother actually has um, suffered a stroke 11 years ago. And since that time, she's been... Um, unable to do a lot of things. Um, she needed full-time care. And most recently, she, I guess, suffered possibly another uh, mini stroke that um, she was unable to recover from. And she, over, she was in the hospital probably for two weeks, um, in which case the um, doctors had assessed that there was not much that could be done anymore. Um, and so she had her um, last week at home under palliative care. And she passed away in her sleep, um, probably, I think it was maybe 2 o'clock in the morning on March the 12th. I was 22 when my father passed away. And so I was, um, I had finished three years of university. I had worked for a year at IBM already, and just as I was going back to finish my last year of university, my dad passed away during the first week of school, and I ended up missing the first week of school. Um, and it, it changed a lot about how that year affected my life. Cousin, who was five years old at the time, um, this was three years ago, uh, during the summer, I think uh, during August, of 2017 um, my cousin got into a car accident she was put into critical condition um, right after like right after along with her dad um, she didn't make it this year around March break my grandmother got sick and passed away. I feel like it actually all started when I was a little girl. When I was five, she actually had a bigger stroke, which paralyzed her left side and she couldn't move or speak. After that, she wasn't the same person she used to be. Did you, do you know anyone who has passed away? Tita Nana and Tita Woolen. Your, your mom's, um, Dad, your mom, your mom, your mom, and her mom. What did you do today? Um, we prayed and we said happy birthday to Tito Waller. Who, who's that? Tito Waller that passed away. How about Tito Waller? Mm-hmm. Ninong's, Ninong's um, brother. Mm-hmm. What happened, to, what happened to him? Passed away. And what does that mean? He passed in heaven. Him today? Do you know what? Who passed away else? Who? Oh, Smokey. Really? Yeah. When? Mm, they're still with him, but he's in this special box, so he can't open it. Ever. It's a box where he just put some 
cats, I think, and they stay with you, I think. How did you grieve or cope with the death? That's a hard one because I was, like I said, I was 22, and at the time, he and I probably weren't in the best place. Um, he had been sick. He had Alzheimer's for several years, and being, you know, a 22-year-old who thinks he knows everything, um, I was frustrated with him instead of realizing that that was an illness. And a lot of the the challenges that we had in our relationship were because I didn't understand and frankly neither did he because he had Alzheimer's. So uh, a lot of the coping with his death was not so much coping with the death but coping with the fact that I now couldn't talk to him about these feelings and what was going on. And I had to, I spent probably a year or two thinking about uh, the problems in our relationship and how they were as much my problems as his and I, I grew up a lot over those two years so that was a lot about how I coped with it was really coming to terms with myself and growing up. I was really beating myself up because when we were told she only had a couple weeks left I was really stressed because I felt like I never had enough time with her I find that I refer back to art. Whenever I'm in distress and I find that I can't talk to anyone about it, throughout the whole motions of her passing away and me coping, I actually ended up painting a portrait of my grandmother and my mom for Mother's Day because Mother's Day was coming up. And it really helped me cope with the feelings I was feeling and almost keep her memory alive throughout our family. I think to this day we still cope. I still cope. I cope with it in very different ways. I, I think about him, so I think that's a nice thing. But when I think about him, it's, a, it, it, it's sad. It, it, I, had a, I had to deal with that, and then I had a wedding to focus on. So I think the wedding part may have masked a little bit of how I felt. But I can't say... Um, I could cope with it in the beginning stages. I think it had to be after everything was said and done. I don't think it, it never will fully settle because it's always still too fresh. So six years later, here we are, and it's still too fresh. But yeah. At first, when I heard the news, my first reaction actually, because my dad called me that morning that it happened. He was like, they were in a, a car accident. I, I, I overslept, so I was still like, I was still like um, groggy, I guess. I, my first reaction was to protect, like sort of like protect everyone's feelings, I guess. Like not sort of just like, I wanted to be the person that someone could uh, cry to, I guess. Like, if they, like just let out the way they were feeling. And in order to do that, I needed to just not cry about it at all. And that's the way I took it. I didn't cry. <laughs> Um, at least not in front of anyone else. I didn't try to grieve about it or I didn't try to cope with that at all. I sort of it just ignored my feelings. Um, at the time of my mother's death, um, I didn't really feel a lot of sadness actually. I was a bit more relieved for her um, simply because she had suffered for so many years and over the course of the 11 years her overall health and well-being was diminishing to the point that at the time of her death like one of the most simplest things of swallowing food she couldn't even do that anymore so when she passed away I think more than anything I felt a sense of relief that she wasn't suffering anymore and that she could finally rest and not have to feel all this pain that she'd been feeling physically and probably mentally and emotionally for the last 11 years. You weren't sad? No. Why not? I don't cry. I'm not a baby. I do like Smokey, but I just like him. What do you do when you're sad? Mm, uh, just play a bit. Wipe it? Your wipe. tears? Yeah. So you do you cry? Nope. Then how do you wipe your tears if you're not crying? It's okay if you cry. I know. What else do you do when you're sad? Um, 
just breathe in and breathe out. Mommy told me it. Mm -hmm. Like when I was scared, she told me this. Just breathe in and then just, just breathe out. What was the worst thing someone said to you? No one really said anything to me that like really hurt me or affected me in any way. It was more of something that happened and basically what happened was they were carrying her out of the funeral home and my brothers were part of those people who help carry the casket and my mom was walking behind the casket. So I kind of just was standing there by myself. I was really emotional and everyone was just staring at me. I felt so alone. I felt like I was just in this hole and everyone was just looking in. That's a hard one. because You get all kinds of ridiculous comments. You get people saying, oh, I know exactly what you're going through. And people who say things like, oh, it'll be okay. But, well, no, it won't be okay. Your, your dad's gone. Um, that's probably the worst one because people always think they know what's in your head and that, you know, they're crying and they're emotional and trying to put that on you when you're actually trying to cope with it and move on and everything's okay, they actually drag you back down because they're so emotional. It would just be helpful if sometimes they just let you grieve and figure things out on your own. I think when I say the worst thing that someone said to me, um, it's more of... You know, I feel bad that a lot of their friends and family were not able to come and, you know, um, support my father more than anything, but to also pay their respects because the pandemic was a very serious issue. And given the age of my mother when she passed away, she was 81. A lot of their friends and some of our family members were also in their senior years. So... We didn't want to risk, um, you know, um, people being exposed and, you know, um, being around each other. So um, more than anything, I think the situation of COVID itself was probably one of the worst things that ever happened during this whole situation. Maybe the worst thing that someone actually said, like in general, to during about the whole thing was was my dad. We were having an argument. He was like, what would she think? And what would your grandfather think? Um, and I thought we had like an unspoken agreement. He knows like I, I was really close with both of them. I was shocked, I guess, of him just telling me that. And then I just reflected on it and I'd ignored it again, so. I think one of the worst things was that someone said was at least you have your wedding to look forward to and it's almost like we couldn't it's almost like i was it was invalid to feel um the like the hurt like it's almost like oh put it aside you have something to look forward to but i didn't want to put it aside like this the truth was this was taking over that happy feeling but um not just what someone said but when we were at the church for the funeral the day before the wedding um somehow n the news got must have been leaked and we had like a, a photographer or sort of uh what do you call it um paparazzi taking photos of our family going th pushing him out in his you know coffin and just having such an intimate moment and taking pictures as if this was something that you know you wanted to share with the world, which wasn't the case. Um, and I couldn't help but, <laughs> somebody pointed it out and what happened next, somebody grabbed his camera. We almost threw it so it would break, but we didn't. And we very uh, aggressively took out the memory card. <laughs> so that was like one of the most um, saddest parts of it all, that someone was so insensitive to how we were feeling on those last few days. What was the best thing someone said to you? The best thing that someone said to me was that we were very fortunate to have 11 great years with our mother um, since the time of her stroke. 
And I think that's very true. Um, when she had her stroke, it was a very massive stroke. She had to have emergency surgery. She was flown to a different hospital and um, she came out of it very critical. So, you know, there was a very large chance that she could have died at that time. Um, but, you know, despite all of the challenges that she went through in those 11 years, we were very fortunate to at least be able to um, be with her and to care with her and, you know, still be able to um, have her in our life for another 11 years. The best thing that someone said to me was probably my mom's cousin. Um, we were driving her home and she asked me and my siblings how we felt and how we were doing with everything going on. I was explaining to her how life is going to be so different. We would always go for brunch on Sundays and without her there, it wouldn't be the same. And the restaurant knew who we were and knew who she was. So I was basically talking about how much change is going to be happening. What she had said to me was that there is change happening all around us. And there was a normal before she passed away, before she had her stroke. And there is going to be a normal when she's gone and that it's an experience that my whole family is going to have to go through together to find that new normal without her. It was really comforting hearing that because it basically gave me hope that everything was going to be all right and that even though times are hard now, things will get better and become a new normal. I, I guess it was because I was the person that everyone would talk to about and just like cry about. Um, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't actually, I don't think there was anything, I don't know, there really was nothing. Um, the best thing someone said to me was that he was here with us that day of our wedding, that he wasn't not going to be there and to support us and you could feel it in the air and I think everyone felt it too and as we mentioned his name through our speeches, um, it was even more, it was even more meaningful that like, he really wasn't not with us, so. Um, just, I'm here. If there's anything you need, I'm here. And, and genuinely meaning it. A lot of people will say, oh, if there's anything you need, give me a call. And then there's people that genuinely are just there. And when they say that they're there, you know it. And you know that there's somebody beside you so you're not alone. What do you think happens when you die? I think the people that you leave behind are very sad. I think that's what happens when you die. Um, as far as, do I believe in reincarnation? No, I don't. I believe that there's a true blessing for being on the earth while we're here. And that when you die, that's over. And instead of living, fearing that, I think we should live cherishing that, knowing that this is precious and it's an incredible gift. And I live every day just being thankful. I guess in a way I kind of do believe like that we go to heaven and there is a hell but it's not like the same way I think everyone else thinks about it because I think I think an afterlife does exist like there is there is mm, there are places that we go to heaven and hell are just places that we go to after death I feel like there's some things that we're not meant to comprehend like we probably go somewhere we just like, don't understand it. We're, we're not meant to comprehend it, so. I would hope <laughs> that we go to heaven. Um, and that, I guess the way I always pictured it, even from when I was a little girl, was because I, I basically kind of grew up with a lot of deaths in our family. We come from a very large family, so... Um, Family members passing away was a very, um, was a thing that, that I was exposed to at a very young age. So I guess I've always centered my beliefs around that. And I always believe that people go to heaven and they're reunited with other family members who have passed away. And that it's just a glorious, happy, 
fun place to be. Um, And so I'm hoping that my mother is in heaven right now with her parents and her sister and my um, other family members on, you know, like my dad's side and so forth and that they're all partying like they used to and that they're, you know, having wonderful meals together and just spending a lot of time together. I, I don't know. I feel like humans have made up sort of a myth of the afterlife. And I feel like the belief that there is an afterlife is more for the living than for the dead. It helps humans cope with loss and it brings their mind at ease. So personally, I believe that this is it. And I know that is a very hard topic, but that's what I think. But I also do hope that loved ones who have gone on are have gone on and are at rest. I think the sick part of you goes and gets healed and you get to um, be 110%. You're brand new. There's nothing wrong, you know. And then there's a part of when you pass that you protect everyone else that you left and you don't let them ever feel alone. So what happens when you when you pass away? Um, you go in heaven. And where's that? Up in the sky. And what do you do before bed? Pray. Why do you pray? Because we pray for all the people that pass away. Like who? Like Mama, like Tito Wallen, Tito Nana. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And what does he do in heaven? Lay down. What else does he do? Hmm. Nothing else. Does he watch over you? Of course. Do you believe in ghosts? Nope. No? What about angels? What do you mean? I don't say... I'm not scared of anything. Do you believe in them? Nope. Yeah? Yep. In what? Ghosts? Yeah. What about angels? Yes. What about God? Nope, he doesn't talk. I don't hear him. Do you like angels? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was your happiest memory with this person? I don't know if there was um, a moment where I was like, wow, this is like the happiest moment in my life with this person. <laughs> or I don't think I can pinpoint one. I don't know. We just, we weren't, um, we were just together most of the time whenever like we had family parties or just get togethers. Mm-hmm or whenever my family would go over to their house. So it was just those times when, I guess, we would, be, we would just watch YouTube, like, her Elsa videos, like, where she would do, like, Play-Doh unboxings or something, or um, the times where uh, she would ask if we wanted to play with her dolls and, like, we could play house and everything. Wow. Um, that would probably be being six or seven years old, I was playing, just starting competitive baseball. My dad worked full-time, obviously. But he would come home from work, wouldn't even change out of his suit, wouldn't change out of his dress shoes. He would just take off his tie, take off his jacket, and grab the baseball glove and say, let's go pitch, let's go play catch. And just going outside, fully clothed in his his work clothes, just being outside and playing catch with me. That I remember vividly. Um, My happiest memory with my mother is probably during the times that we vacationed (laughs) because that was probably her happier most happiest times she enjoyed traveling and as a kid growing up every year we would do large long road trips and we always traveled with other family members it was such a big joyous time and Um, My mother just thrived in happiness during those times. Any time that she could spend with her family was always, you know, a very joyful time for her. So I would say our vacations because we did so many things together. And the road trips itself, she loves music. And we would listen to endless songs of ABBA and the Beatles. And it was just... It's fun. 
especially now with ABBA still being relevant in this generation, um, it's happy to sort of bring back those memories. I don't have one because I, I couldn't. I couldn't have one. He's 22 years old and I've known him since his birth. So it's like 22 years worth of memories. And even till now, he still is able to create memories with me. Like these are, and I'm talking through dreams and the meanings of the dreams. And more more recently, like he, he like one of the, the, the more realer dreams I ever had um, was I physically felt hugged? Like, could you, could you imagine that? Physically felt hugged in my dream, and I was so scared to wake up that I kind of kept like just closing my eyes and sleeping, and I just kept feeling like someone hug me and hug me again, and it was just like such a reassurance that it was totally him coming through. So my memories don't ever, I don't have one. You know, he slept over when he was a young kid, and over the years, and. You know, there's so many little things I could pick out, but um, the the 22 years of knowing him is, you know, the, the fuller memory and then all of the memories that we make after in the last little while now that he's been gone. Jeez. Um, I don't really have a lot of memories with my grandmother when she was truly the person she was. I don't know if this counts, but I think a favorite memory of mine would just be how everyone talked about her after she passed away and how everyone would share stories about her and who she was and what she loved. Even though I never got to really know who she was, when I think about her now, I think about the person who, who loves to sing, who loved her family. Even though I never met that person, that's who I'll remember her as.